<laughs> I slept like a brick last night. Even with the tick apocalypse? It's bad, but... Nope. Crashed hard. I didn't even hear you get up. I'm guessing you got up a few times to check for ticks. Last night they were crawling all over us. And all our stuff. I don't know. But I did a little inspection when I got up this morning and I didn't see anything. That's amazing out there. Oh, this is Heather's second best breakfast that she makes. This is the strawberry vanilla. It's her number one. Banana nutmeg. It's the best. Vanilla contest. It's... What the blueberry? It's good. It's pretty good, too. I'm still going to say that's a solid third. But uh, nutmeg, I could eat that every day. I feel like we've we escaped the the tick apocalypse last night. So far, so good. Ryan was picking him out of his neck and hairline like for a good half hour. Oh, there's another one. Oh, another one. It was, it was pretty sweet. Well, we glassed yeah, here at our tent all morning. We decided we're gonna climb to the top of that for a better vantage point. We've got everything we need for the day if we gotta dive off the mountain again and chase a bear. So, we're in good shape. Just gotta find a bear. Oh, that was super fun. 1,000 feet in point six miles. It's a bit of a climb. Seems like when things get tough, you just go higher, right? <laughs> so you can see more, new perspective of everything. And yet I still haven't seen a bear from up here. <laughs> He's a long way. So Ryan found a bear on the moon. <laughs> on the moon. <laughs> so we're going after it. It looks really nice. It looks, it like, looks like thunder. Chocolate Thunder. Chocolate Thunder. Two brother. Two point oh. He looks. He's a. He's a toad. Big old hog leg up there for sure. Cool color too. But he's just wide out in the open. Yeah, he's dark chocolate. Nice, nice looking bear. So we've got to go down here, grab our camp, climb all the way back up to that saddle. So it's a thousand down. It's probably twelve hundred to the saddle again. And then if he's still there, we're going to drop 1,200, 1,000, 1,200, and then out the other side to get him. It's more than 1,000. It was 1,000 from there to the peak this morning. Oh, yeah, so 1,400. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so more than that. The thing is, we're probably going to kill one on the way to kill that one because basically I hope so. it's a long trek. A lot can happen between here and there. It's true. Either way, we just got to get up there by this evening. Yeah. Maybe we go for them tomorrow. Or... Tonight. What time is it? Tonight is four. We got five or six hours. Five sure. hours? If we can get there, let's go. All right. The hunt is on. Kind of. Took us two days to get to Chocolate Thunder. Just apropos that it takes two days to get to Chocolate Thunder 2.0. This uh, high elevation camp served its purpose. We're gonna break this down and then we basically gotta go over that. Over there and then over that. Right? Right. We got a lot of chicka chickens to do today. Ups and downs. Well, got camps loaded up. We gotta go down the mountain where we stashed our gear yesterday and uh, grab it so we can climb back up on the other side well we got we got off the hill got our uh, little hang down here where the rest of our food was and we're gonna hit this ridge and start up this hot hot hill that's the best part is the hot hill <laughs> no it's not you're crazy well we're uh, up in the basin that we're 
Cross Canyon. Went down into the creek. Now we're working up this. We gotta hit this saddle up here. <sighs> so we got a little climb ahead of us. And these downfall aren't making it very quick. But get up to this top and post up, try to find that bear on the other side. He's still gonna be a long ways off, but hopefully we can get eyes on him. Just a giant. She's uh, she's running over the ridge right now. Wow, we're sneaking underneath those grizzly, trying to sneak past them. They went over the ridge. Just kind of creeping down this hill underneath them. Hoping they leave us alone. Cool is this place. We might just see one come across our hillside here tonight. But we picked up another bear up on the very top. He's a long ways off. There's no way we'd get up there, but so we got two bears in this basin we know of. So that's good. Two black bears. Two black bears plus two grizz. 
right behind us. And we're hoping they uh, stay in that other basin and keep going the other way. But we just gotta find a spot to camp and perch up so we can watch this all day tomorrow. Tomorrow it looks like we're gonna kill a bear, maybe two. All right, well, we uh, we got down from the G-Bears. We hope we're far enough away from the G-Bears. We got a couple of grouse trying to make some sweet love here in front of us. <laughs> and then we've got um, picked up a small cinnamon up in this basin. We're looking for thunder, but he's not we haven't picked him up yet, but Brian picked up a nice big jet black up on the top too. So we've got three bears in this basin right now, um, at least. So we got bears to go for tomorrow, but we, we're losing daylight, so we just don't have time to go for go for them because that black one is definitely worthy. And we haven't picked up old chocolate yet, but I think we will. Well, there's not much room on this hillside. We found a spot that's kind of level and then we had to kick out some beds. I'll show you my construction here. Here's Ryan's little spot right here. Kicked out about a foot worth of dirt. I actually built this glorious shelf. Had to pound in a few sticks here to hold my logs in place. And then I Filled it with dirt in the back. It's flat. And uh, hopefully that gives us a good night's rest. Those grizz are only on the ridge above us. So don't like that. We're going to see if we can find a spot to put our food that's pretty far from us. There's nothing here except dirt and some trees. So. It's not like it's a lush green hillside to feed on. So hopefully they don't even discover us. Of course they're breeding, so the other thing is hopefully they're too busy getting it on to uh, bother us. What's up, Ryan? Just gonna make some breakfast and I just looked at my hat this morning. Got some holes in it. <laughs> Got a the sweat must have tasted pretty good to whatever little rodent was in here. Just chewed the crud out of it. I especially like the hole in the front there. You like that? That one's good. Yeah. Oh, how old is that hat? How many trips has it been <laughs> it's on? It's kind of old, but <laughs> I didn't want to lose it quite yet. Oh, I bet Hillary's really rat. excited about that. And the worst thing She's is... like, heck yeah. yeah. New hat time. This was about a foot from my face last night. <laughs> I didn't even notice. <laughs> I like our little zen tree in the middle of our shelter here. <laughs> well, we could have had it. It was another three feet tall until you broke it. Yeah. What a makeshift camp we got here. You know what, though? All kicked out. It was Isn't nice. Kicked out beds? Yeah. On a hill, like, it was a pretty sloped out hill we had going on here. It worked like a charm. It was a little work digging out these beds here so we could camp here, but the view from our tent, pretty tough to beat. What did you think of those grizzlies yesterday? The ones that are just up here, <laughs> just up on the top. <laughs> that was pretty cool to see. That was fun to watch that that old boar just like blocking her. You could tell she wanted to come down this ridge. He didn't want her to come down this ridge. He just like body checker, body checker. It's pretty cool. So far the grizzlies that we've seen are just flat out in the wide open. That first one we saw was just out in the meadow. These two are just like wide open. It looks like the Brooks Range up there, just tundra. Big mountain, open. Hard to miss them. We, uh, we could have easily hunted a lot closer to home too, and probably driven roads. And just
this glass from from the truck or whatever and picked up bears but you always kind of want to see like push your boundaries and see new areas and this one's been on the radar for a long time and and honestly I'm using this as a uh, scouting mission for deer and elk as well so kind of get a little bit of that in is when you're chasing bears in the springtime we uh we gave ourselves 10 days on this trip it's kind of what we try to do with every one because these type places it first off it takes a couple days to get into you know even a five-day trip in a place like this would be really really tough you could come right in and kill a bear and be done with it could happen but i feel like we're going to use every one of our 10 days on this one because we just found our basin we've got three days worth of food left and we just found like where it feels really good like we got a really good shot at killing some really nice big bears once you find a basin like this it's like okay we found it now we can spend the next two three days here and hopefully get two old mature boars out of it but that's kind of the goal is build a, a trip around 10 days that just gives you all the time you need really to figure it out well i want another game plan yeah. Game plan is we just packed up everything for the day. We got a bear sighted up up on the top of this ridge here. It's the jet black. He's not I wouldn't say he's the biggest. He's not as big as Thunder 2.0 up here, but we're going to climb down, climb up, and try to uh, get better eyes on everything, see if we can pick up that chocolate. But we also have that jet black up here to go for, so be nice to get him down. Also, right where Chocolate 2.0, right where he was at, in the same cut, he glassed up a, a big old grizzly bear. Big giant grizz. He's yep. feeding, cruising around, and then went up the cut. So another another G bear spotted, right where we're headed. Right, we're in our basin. I just kind of keep popping up where we want to be. We wanted yeah. to be up there. Sound board didn't let us stay up there for sure. No, got our food hung. We're gonna leave our camp here. We're gonna bomb up there and kill a bear, and then motor back. Eat some bear. <laughs> There's the tent. Ryan's got the idea. We should leave the door open so they don't rip through the tent when they come for a visit. I think we're screwed either way, but. If a grizzly wants to rip this thing into a pile of feathers and scrap cloth, it, it's gonna happen. What do you think, Ryan? I think you're probably right, but hopefully it doesn't shred the tent either way. That would really suck. But uh, or the world's greatest go air in there pad. And sniff around; it'll pop the pads. Probably <laughs> blow those sleeping bags apart. But as long as we have a tent. bit steep. Yeah. You know it's steep when your knee is touching the hillside. That looks sketchy as hell to me. Unless he comes back, we'll never see him, but we're hoping there's another 
bear up in this little drainage where we saw him last night. And then thunder. Yeah, there's a grizz in there too, but we're not even picking him up right now. And he's just probably in some of the timber. So we'll find him. Peanut butter bliss. You walking uphill? Is he walking uphill? Yeah. Alright, well, it's 1.30. Um, we've been keeping eyes on where Chocolate Thunder was. Chocolate Thunder is a little bit redder than we thought because he just showed back up. And uh, small head, giant body on him. It's just a pretty, pretty bear. Um, He's a long ways up, but we got to play on him. It's 1.30, so we're going to do everything we can to get up and get a side, uh, side hill of him and hopefully get a shot. He may, he may tuck in for a while and come back out this evening, but we got to play on a great bear. Yeah. So. Well, locked and loaded. Finally, a good bear in a killable spot. It's about freaking time. This is a bear among bears. I haven't seen a color face this big before. No, Besides chocolate, thunder. Usually, usually on the smaller, smaller side when they're that blondish, reddish. He's got some dark to him, but in the sun it just makes him look so light. Oh, he's, he's pretty, he's, he's everything I'd hope for. And, and a bear, I just hope we can get up there on him. This is gonna be fun. Heck yeah. yeah. My friend. <laughs> That is a... That's a grind, that's a long That's ways. an adventure. Yeah, just getting through this, up this ridge and then across that canyon. We're gonna stay on this ridge. We're not gonna just drop right down because the wind is up here, it's cutting across, but down there it's probably pushing up. We're gonna cut this ridge and take the bowl and angle our way up across. That way we keep the wind. That way even if it does push that way, it won't be um, messing us up at all. Probably get a little bit above him, side side hill, and uh, off that ridge, we should be able to look down into that next cut where he is. We uh, glassed a massive grizz in the same cut this morning, and uh, we're gonna be moving right where we saw that grizz. Hopefully, he's nowhere to be found. Just keep our eyes on this. Uh, hopefully 
pops out. Solid here. <sighs> All right, well, we're idiots because we're set up right where I saw the big old, big old bear, a giant body on it. So when we, Brian and I both were looking up on the mountain, I picked up a bear, and Brian, Brian's like. I got him. We assume we're looking at the same bear. Well, apparently that's not the case because I get up here and get set up on this spot and Brian is like, I could tell he didn't see, he didn't feel like this was right. He wanted to look at that next ridge over, which is where he was seeing his big chocolate bear. So we've got two bears in front of us somewhere. We never put it together. Um, Brian, Brian was saying, is, is your bear moving up? And I was like, yeah, but his was in the wide open. Mine was in September. We just looked at footage and two totally different bears just caught him at the same time. So weird. <laughs> so apparently we've got two nice big bears in front of us and we can't pick up either one of them right now, but I think we will. Hopefully, we pull a double out of this this base. That'd be great. <laughs> what are the odds? Well, there's been a pretty cool turn of events. We found the chocolate, which I'm pretty sure is the bear thunder. I was watching this morning, <laughs> which is chocolate thunder. And here he is right in front of us, and he's a cool bear. Jesus. His color is giant, but there is a bright, Red lightning. Red, yeah, red lightning. Somewhere right here in front of us. Trying to be patient here and kill two bears. Because if we go for that one, we'll, we'll blow this one out. But that one is a tank. <laughs> Just a tank. He's 500 yards out right now. He's a gorgeous bear. Decisions, decisions, Brian. <laughs> But now, both of these bears are just studs with big old bodies on them. This one's got a nice big old nugget. Pretty, pretty dark chocolate color. <laughs> I know, I'm like, I'd like, I think we just sit back and we watch. They're not leaving this area. As tempting as it is to go get thunder, I would hate to blow this one out. We might get a shot at this one, set up where we're at, and then we can go get thunder. Yeah. Yeah, chocolate is a, a, a large. Yeah, we've been watching him feed. He's kind of milling on this little ridge down there, but we're waiting for red lightning to show up here. I don't know how much time we're going to give him, but he's in here and he might even be bigger older he just had a swagger but it's tough when you got a beautiful large chocolate he's 560 yards from here last we saw red lightning he was 300 yards right in here so i don't know we got options but good options the color on this bear is really cool. Oh, it's just perfect chocolate, all chocolate. This other bear is real red, blonde, bright. Flashy. He's shining like a diamond on the mountain when you see him. But he's here. He's, I mean, he's just got to be behind a tree or something. We just can't quite get eyes on him. But he, uh, he didn't look like he was getting out of the country anytime soon. Last I saw him, he was just grazing in the, on the open hillside there, so. Another turn of events. Dude, we've just found red lightning. He's, he is a tank. Red lightning is my bear. He's got shoulders, he's got ass cheeks. 
he just he walks with a swagger he's just so bright and then we've got contrasting dark brown down here this one just pops they're about 250 300 yards apart just split here on the mountain but what a beautiful coat eh look at his little ears on the side of his head he's we got two large bears going on i love it all right it's on he's going up and over this ridge we're trying to get there before he leaves the basin failed. We got over here. Last we saw the bear skirted this little hump down below us. And we lost him in this draw. So we got above him. The only thing we can think of is he came up this gut up and over into the abyss. We have no idea. But it's getting late. We're going to have to go back to camp which is a long ways away. We're gonna leave. We're gonna leave Chocolate Thunder down here. Do the same thing tomorrow. And see if we can't pick him up. But it's too bad. We're so close to getting this this really nice big bear. But I think we did everything we could. Well, sun's going down. So I'm gonna lose light here pretty soon. But this is a beautiful walk, walking this ridge out.
man. <clears throat> well, that that was a little nuts. <laughs> you never want to have to use the predator call, but in this country, <laughs> holy crap! So we had chocolate over on this ridge, and I was trying to stop him to get him to turn and give me a shot. And so I start screaming on this thing. Oh yeah, I'm shaking on that one. And then I hear a bunch of, did you hear all that? Cracking? <laughs> and this, this big old jet black just comes busting out. I don't know, I had to freehand shoot him because he was getting close. I had the camera what is on it, 30 yards? And, <laughs> and then I was like, I had to stand up when you stood up and I'm like, you're gonna freehand shoot him. I had to, I couldn't. He was too close, this little hump right here. <laughs> so I just had to freehand him, but 30 yards straight on. I'm uncomfortably intense. I'm looking over my shoulder. There was a grizz in his face. Yeah, then we saw a grizz. I didn't, last thing I wanted to do was squeal on this, but I wanted to turn this guy. But we just walked through here, Brian. I know. We just came crashing through here. And what, a half a dozen squeals on this thing? And that bear is racing in, like on a mission. Well, let's get on him, because I don't want to do this in the dark. Yeah, he's, he's right here. Oh, he smokes. That was nuts. That's nerve wracking. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Here we are about to shoot that bear, and then, yeah, the bear just comes busting in on us. That was close, too. He wasn't slowing down. Even when we both stood up, he didn't really even, he was like, I'm coming. He's bold. All right, folks, we interrupt this video to talk a little bit about what you just saw and what went down. Because much to our shock and horror, <laughs> we... Uh, we missed something. Yeah. We didn't know. We didn't see that bear come into the predator call until after the hunt was over. In fact, I was... Way after. Way after I was at home on my computer... And I was going over the footage, and we had talked about the bear you shot, where it came from. And we were wrong. Dead wrong. <laughs> <laughs> we thought for sure it must have just appeared from behind us or something. It all made sense. Like, I told that story when we got Home. back from our trip. And now that I, you send me a message, like a video, it's not the same story it's, anymore. It flipped the bear upside down. didn't come from where I thought it did. It came from a whole other area. So I get home and I'm looking at the footage and I'm like, okay, where did that black bear, where was he? And I see the little black dot and I'm like, oh, he's moving around. And, oh, there he is, you know. Huh, how in the world did we not see that bear there? And then you do the call and I see not just him, but the other bear running up the hill. And I was like, I got physically sick. Like it was shocking enough to see where the black bear came from. What was more shocking was to see the actual bear that we went all the way over there for, mm -hmm. where, where he was and how I, did we miss him? I took a screenshot and circled the bears and then I took some video and I sent it to you and I was like, dude, this is going to blow your mind. And I sent it to you. And I think your response was in text, it was, I feel nauseous, nauseous. And I was like, me too, because my life was in danger. What if that was a grizzly or that bear came in? And then it dawned on me. I was like, is Ryan worried about that or the fact he didn't get the bear he was after? I didn't get the bear I was after. <laughs> that was a beautiful bear. Ryan was nauseous because he didn't get the bear. And now we've got like more video showing how just beautiful that bear was. And he was right there in our pocket. What if we didn't run a camera? We would have never known that bear came into us. So doesn't like, that how, creep you out? Yeah. It, it makes you think back how many things happen on the mountain that you have no idea really happened because you don't always have a camera on or the angle isn't just perfect. Mm -hmm. I mean, to actually capture, you know, you holding that camera and capture that bear, both bears coming all the way across that canyon right into our lap. We never even saw them till the black bear was basically right on us. I've got an excuse. I did have a little stump right here. I don't know what your excuse is. Okay, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> this is the thing, like people can't see my angle. I've I'm looking down a camera lens on this bear and I'm holding the other camera straight out like this. I'm not managing this camera. And in fact, um you are methodical on your shots. Like mm -hmm. you, you you like make sure you never miss. 
to the point where I'm like, shoot him already. <laughs> he shoot him already. <laughs> he just keeps getting closer and closer. Yeah. It, it gave me enough time to f- turn the camera on it and then pick the camera off the ground and film you shoot it. He was nice and close at that point. Uh, Very nice and close. Way too close. 30 so yards close. from us. Yeah. And we were, we didn't see him. That's just wrong. <laughs> we had him. We had the bear that close. What is your takeaway from this? James not coming with us could have killed us, Brian. <laughs> That's all I know. That's and I blame see. James. I wish, I wish he'd have been there. I blame James for most of it, all of it. Mm-hmm. And the lack of photography and photos from this trip, I blame James for as yeah, well. Very few great photos to post it right now because James wasn't with us. James really let us down, and that's yeah. that's the other lesson. Well, and I think we, we talked about two guys. So yeah, James and Jeff Lusk. They yeah, are, um, they should be coming with us next trip. That's right. All right, folks. Thanks for watching our show. We really appreciate the feedback. It's been fun, and look forward to the next episode. The next one is good too. And yeah. the fourth one's going to be good, too. They're both good. Lots yeah. of excitement. Thanks. Like stay gritty, folks. Thanks for watching part two of this four-part bear hunt. Tune in next Sunday to see Ryan recover his big jet black bear. We really appreciate the legit feedback and support we've been getting from this hunting and wild game community. We told you we'd pick a winner from the comment section of last week's video, and that winner is Brenton Bassey. Brenton wrote, Sunday nights are starting to remind me of when I was a kid and we waited all week for Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Only you guys are actually hunting. More better. Love the drone shots also. You've upped your game. Thanks, Brenton. If you'd like to be entered to win a brand new Capra Hunter TI replacement blade skinning knife made by Goat Knives, all you gotta do is subscribe to this YouTube channel, like this video, and leave us a comment. We'll pick a winner next week. Thanks for watching and stay gritty.